we want to spend a little bit more time with the formula for standard error because it's a good one and we use it a lot. So let's look at a couple examples. We have the list of the top 50 colleges and universities in the United States in 2020 according to the U.S. News and World Report. Of course, this, these are real data and you're welcome to look them up on StatCrunch. There they are. And I have the mean and the variance for this data set is given in st the StatCrunch output below. Suppose you're going to take random samples of size 3 from this list. So notice you're going to take random samples and n is going to be equal to 3. Now assuming the requirements for the central limit theorem are met, oh, and that's something to note. I abbreviate the central limit theorem a lot because it's a lot to say. <laughs> and so if you want, you can actually make a note of that up here. Um, this is the CLT. Actually, um, it's pretty common to abbreviate that. So central limit theorem. Okay. So assuming that the Requirements are met. So what are they talking about? Well, they're talking about these requirements, these conditions, that it's random, independent, normal, all that good stuff. So they're saying assume those things are taking place. So when they say that, that's the random, independent, normal part. So they're just saying, hey, assume that you've met that. What would be the approximate standard error of the subsequent distribution? All right, well, standard error, the formula for standard error is s over the square root of n, right? Well, it's sigma over the square root of n, but we don't have sigma. We have s. Well, we don't even have that. If you look at what was given to you, what was given was the mean, right? And then they also gave us s squared here. That's the, that's the variance. Right? It's, it's the adjusted variance. This is not on adjusted. This isn't sigma. This is s. What's well, s squared? So how would I find s? Ooh, that's a review question, right? Remember that s is the square root of the variance. It's the square root of s squared. So I need to take the square root of this number. Now there's one other issue here, which is that number is in scientific notation. Do you see the e negative or excuse me, e positive eight right here? See that? So what that means is that the decimal is actually eight spots over. So if I move it, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight would be a zero. So this is one, one, nine, two, seven, two, four, four, zero. That's eight spots over to the right, right? So that's scientific notation right there. All right, scientific notation makes this make this so much more. All right, so then that means that if I want to find the standard deviation to use in my formula, I need to take the square root of that number, of the one one nine two seven two four four zero, and again that's one, two three four five six seven eight spots over. See how I'm doing that? I didn't mean to write there though. There we go. Well, I will grab Desmos or a calculator or something. I'll grab the calculator. So the calculator is harder to work with than Desmos. All right, so I take the second square root, 11927244, and I get 10,921. So this is 10,921.19224, sure. And then I will use that over here in my formula. So when I want the standard error, I want s over the square root of n. So that would be s I just found was 10,921.19224. And I will divide that by the square root of my sample size. And the sample size was given to us as 3. So I'm going to take that and divide by the square root of 3. And that will be the standard error. So I like this question just because it was a little bit of review, <laughs> reminding us about variance. Like, oh yeah, variance, that's a thing. All right, so today, taking my last answer, 10,921 and some change, and I'm dividing it by the square root of 3, and I get 6,305. 3, 6, 6, My goodness, I can talk. <laughs> All right, so this is 6,305.35. Good enough. Now this was undergraduate enrollment. These are the students, right? So if you want a unit, these are students, right? because it's the enrollment, not the money, right? Tuition and fees is money, 
but enrollment means that we're looking at students. All right, so that was kind of fun. It reminded us a bit about variance and standard deviation and the relationship between the two from chapter three. And then we're able to use that over here. It also reminded us about scientific notation. It's kind of interesting. StatCrunch does scientific notation with a lowercase e, which is very unusual. It's usually a capital E for computer programs, but that's how they programmed it. So it's kind of interesting to see that. All right, now the following is a graph of the sampling distribution. They want us to tell them what the value of the mean of the center, the mean of the x bars, sorry, the center of the x bars is. And what is the value of sigma of x bars? Okay, so keep in mind, when they say this is a graph of a sampling distribution, what they're saying is that this curve is the x bar curves. What you're looking at here, if this is a sampling distribution, is these are the x bars. Right? It's a graph of X bars. It's not a graph of the originals. This is not the population. This is the sampling. This is a bunch of different X bars pulled from some kind of population. All right. Now, the mean of the X bars would be the center, which is 123. Simple as that. Now, sigma sub X bar should be where the inflection points happen, right? So the inflection point happens, you can see right here, I, I set it up this way. I set it up so that it's what you have. Right? Remember the empirical rule? Remember the inflection points? So it's 128.4 take away 123. The difference between those two is my standard error. Or my, yeah, standard error. So it's 5.4. Now, how did I get that? Well, I took 128.4 and I subtracted 123. Or if you like, you could take 123 and subtract 117.6. That would also work. Right? Both of these are 5.4. So 5.4 is the standard error. It's the standard deviation, right? the inflection point location of your sampling distribution of X bars. So this is the X bar graph. Its standard deviation is your standard error, right? Okay, so then if the sample size is 15, explain what is likely true about the population. Ooh, sneaky. This is normally shaped. So hopefully you can all see <laughs> this is an X bar graph and it's normal. If N is only 15, and it was normal, then that probably means the population was normal. I mean, think back to example one right here. When it was skewed, 10 wasn't quite enough to get it to be normal. But if it was normal to begin with, then all of them are normal. Like 15 would have been normal because all the rest of them were. See what I mean? So since it's normal when n is equal to 15, that probably means that the population was normal to begin with. which is less than 30, right? So this is 15 and it's normal. So if it's normal with n equal to only 15, then that probably means, oops, then probably, I mean, we don't know for sure because we don't have the graph or anything. The population was normal to begin with. because 15 otherwise might not be enough to overcome some, the skewed shape. If there was a skewed shape, 15 wouldn't be enough. We want 30 or higher. So if it's normal when n is only equal to 15, that probably means the distribution was normal. Remember, those are the two ways we can get normal. Either it can be normal to begin with, or you can be n, n can be large. So if it's normal to begin with, n can be anything. Any low number, any high number, anything and it will still be normal. If it was not normal to begin with, then you need n to be large enough, right? If n is not large enough, say like 15, and it's normal, then that means it was probably normal to begin with because the population distribution was normal. Right? You'll still have the normal shape even if n is any number here. Whereas if it's not normal to begin with, then you're going to need n to be bigger than 30. 
All right. So since this is normal and n was 15, eh, it's probably a good bet that the population was normal. Now, here's where the real fun begins. Find the approximate standard deviation. Hmm. That's s. Right. The standard deviation of the population is s, or sigma, right? whichever one. Um, for this purpose, we probably go with sigma, actually, because it's talking about the population. So we'll say it's sigma. Not sigma sub x bar, sigma. Hmm. Well, remember, we have a formula for the standard error of the x bar, which is what sigma sub x bar is. It's sigma over the square root of n, right? And so what they're asking us to do is solve for sigma, but we know sigma sub x bar. Sigma sub x bar, we already found based on the inflection points, it's 5.4. So we know this is 5.4. We don't know what sigma is, but we do know that n is 15. And they're asking us to solve that for sigma. What you have to do, algebraically speaking, this is division right here. And the way to undo division is to multiply. So what you do is you multiply both sides by the square root of 15. When you do that over here, they'll cancel. Right? Square root of 15 and square root of 15 will go away. So all I need to do is grab a calculator and take the square root of 15 and multiply it by 5.4. And again, you could do this in decimals just as easily as you could in calculus. Matter of fact, more easily. It's easier on decimals. <laughs> square root of 15. Now here's the thing about that's difficult in here. You have to get out of the square root. Right, you see how the cursor's under the square root? If I write times right now, I'm still underneath there, which I do not want. So let me delete that. Let me go back and press delete. I have to hit the right arrow and get out of that square root. Now see how my cursor's not in there. So when I press the times button, the square root bar does not continue. So times 5.4. Be very careful with that. You don't want to make that mistake. And I can see that sigma, which is all that's left over here, is approximately... And then over here, I get 20.914. And just to show you this in Desmos, um, when I do Desmos, I can grab square root down here in the palette. It's down here. It looks like a little check mark, but I actually just type SQRT and it knows what I want. So I do it that way a lot. So square root of 15. And then just like the calculator, you have to get out of there. If you time the times dot, that's not what you want. So you want to use your right arrow to get out of there and then say times 5.4. And there you have it. Oops, I made it a little bigger so you could see it better. Right, so it should look in decimals just like it looks on the page. Also, on the calculator, just like it looks on the page. But these two examples tie together because this particular one has us using that standard error formula f in, in kind of a forwards direction. We figure out S, then we plug it in, right? S and N, we plug in. It just took us a minute to figure out S because we had to remember something from Chapter 3. But, you know, if they gave us S, then we could just stick it in, be no problem. This one kind of goes backwards. We figure out the standard error part first, that 5.4 first, based on what we know about the empirical rule in the graph. And then we figured out the sample size because they gave it to us. That was easy. And then we solved for sigma. In, it kind of goes backwards. You set it equal to 5.4 and you solve for sigma. Same formula, but being used two different ways.